Okay, I wanted to do this as a little demonstration for the Q85 hub motors, which are here. And I have my foot shells off and sort of clamped together so they don't jump off of my uh, cooler workstation here. And I have it set up to the Robo Run um, PC software, which is by Robotech. And I'm going to show you some parameters that I set and sort of a general overview of this setup here. Um, basically, um, I will go through the, um, on the left hand column. You've got a configuration tab, and you've got a run tab, console, and a scripting tab for there. When you're connected, you'll see the controller. Um, there's an emergency stop right here, which is very important if you need it um, to uh, run away droid syndrome. I will say you would like to keep your um, droid off the ground. Preferably something like this, or if you can, you know, keep it upright so you're not doing your setup testing uh, while it has the potential of going awry. It's happened, trust me. So it's a good idea to set this up this way, and then you can play with it later without uh, harming yourself or anyone else. Okay. So on the general uh, configuration tab, you have a. Hold on a second. Let me get a pencil here to make it easier to point to stuff. Sorry about that. On the startup here, you basically expand these down and you have a scripting. Um, this is normally disabled. I enabled this because I am actually using scripting, which is in this tab over here. So you can leave that disabled or if you have scripting, then you wanna make sure you enable it so that when this controller starts up, your scripting will automatically enable so you don't have to worry about it if you have something set up like speed modes or things of that nature. Uh, as you go down here, um, you want to go to the next sort of, there's a lot of other things buried in here, but these are just sort of the general uh, ones that will help you kind of get started, but you can look through them and look through the Robotech manual, of course. Uh, command priorities, this is where you're going to set up your, um, basically your input. So your, your controller um, would normally be set up as pulse. Um, RS-232, basically that's your USB, so that's your computer that's plugged in right now to the Robotech. Um, if it doesn't see this signal, then it'll go to the pulse. So you can set up the pulse first if you want, and then the RS-232 after. It uh, just depends on, you know, kind of how you have it set up. Either one of them will work. It'll just basically respond to whatever you have as an as a input signal at the time. So it's just something that's there to be aware of. Uh, next thing that's important here is the command adjustments tab. This normally this is for motor one and two, and these normally come set up as linear. And that means that if you basically give it a command from, let's say, uh, 1000 to 2000 uh, PWM from your controller, it's just going to go, it's going to be very linear. It's just going to be very straight. So if you want your droid just to sort of take off in a linear fashion, then you can use that as you increase the joystick or decrease, it'll just basically go, you know, value will go very straight, um, more of this way. I put it to exponential, exponential, uh, medium, and you can play with this, but if you, if you click on these, you'll have uh, quite a few options. So you can go linear, there's exponential weak, exponential strong, and then there's logarithmic. Um, so far, I've had the best luck with the exponential. Um, Basically, the differences between the exponential and the logarithm, log, logarithmic is the way that the um, input signal either starts off um, strong and then ends weaker, or starts off weaker and then ends stronger. So the exponential basically starts off a little bit weaker and then it goes stronger as it goes. With the logarithmic, it starts off stronger and kind of tapers off. So it's just sort of the way that the curve is set up for each one of those. Those are in the Robotech manual. You can get a clearer understanding of those. Um, you can just experiment with them too on how you know quickly it accelerates and decelerates. It's just the sort of dynamic of the of this of the way it's controlled. So there's a lot of different settings, but that's something that I noticed um, helped it from just you know taking off right away. It sort of helped you know it subtly kind of go into uh, uh, speed where I could slow it down, speed it up, sort of more of a controlled fashion. So that's that's an important one to play with. Um, let me go down further here and you'll see that this is where your inputs are set up. So um, we're not using for this uh, 
this one here, we're not using digital inputs, analog inputs, we're using the pulse inputs. So as you expand each pulse, that's pulse uh, one, pulse two, pulse three, down further there. Um, basically, these I've labeled, and you can put uh, type in the label. This sort of helps me understand, okay, uh, this is the forward and reverse on pulse input one, and then this was the left and right for pulse two. So um, motor command one, I have set up for pulse uh, input one, and motor command two, I have set up for pulse input two. You can select uh, motor one or motor two, either one, and this is one of the ways that you can use to kind of orient your uh, motors. If they're not going the same direction, or if you know this one's going the opposite way, or that one's going the opposite way, you can select you know, you can put two here, put one here, uh, this and that. And there's another place to do that as well, but it's just one place to say, okay, wh what are you controlling? So um, I have it set up pretty like one to one, two to two, just to keep it consistent here. Um, but you know, you can do different uh, values here. Also on uh, the polarity, you have on each input, you have capture polarity, you have inverted or direct. So if you click on that, you can do the same thing and you can reverse the action of each motor. So for instance, if you want this to be motor one, that's fine, but if it's going the wrong direction, you can then invert it or put it direct here. Same with motor two, uh, either way. So this is just kind of how you have your wiring set up and this is basically how you wanna affiliate the direction. The dead band input, uh, the dead band percentage I have at eight, usually it's 5%. Uh, basically that's just, how much joystick do you need to get it to start doing something? Um, if this is set too narrow, it might sort of be you know a little bit reactive right off the get-go. So if you want to give yourself a little bit of more direct, you know, I want to push it a little bit, and then I I don't want it to jump, but I want it to kind of you know go a little bit further. So the intent is that I'm going one direction or the other. You can make that a little bit bigger. I wouldn't go too much more than maybe 10%. Um, because then you just lose a lot of the the range there. So I have it set at eight, but you can put it down to, to five or six or four or whatever. Um, don't do anything with these actions. There's some things here you that if you basically say, oh, turn this on or do something with this action on motor one or two, um, what can happen is you can see the options here. You've got safety stop, emergency stop, forward, this and that. Um, run script, but you, you have to be careful because if you set this to do something, then the minute it sees, you know, a, a signal, it might do something. Um, so that's the minimum is a thousand. The maximum is 2000 here. The center is 1500. Uh, you just don't want to set those unless you really understand what you want it to do. Uh, speaking of that, this is basically your joystick, a uh, thousand to 2000. It's 1500 in the center. You can calibrate those, um, and when you do that, it will show uh, basically a, uh, a range here, and you can start, and you can basically go through this. It will set with your joystick going full, forward, center, and um, maximum. Uh, basically, I'm sorry, minimum, center, maximum. It'll show you what those actual values are on your controller, and then you can save those and then those will be your new values. So you can actually um, get those a little bit closer to um, you know, what they really are versus the defaults here. And that'll kind of help your overall control as well. So you can calibrate each one of those, that on, mo on, on pulse one and pulse two. And then uh, basically that'll allow you to have a little bit more customized. Um, and you wanna do that with your droid up because you have to, uh, you're going to be doing it basically live, so you're going to be going full blast one way, center, full blast the other way, and you don't want to do that while you're um, on the ground unless you have enough space to, to do that. Anyway, that's that on this side, and there's each one of them for pulse one, pulse two. You come over here to the other side here, you've got uh, general. Um, I haven't changed any of these. The, the PWM frequency left this at 60 or 16, excuse me. Um, you also have the, some voltage limits. You can set these um, to your controller. Uh, typically, I mean, I'm running 24 volts on my motor, so the over voltage limit I have set for 35. I think normally it's 60. And then you can basically have um, a hysteresis on either end of that. So uh, basically, as it gets close to its range, you can have an under voltage, basically, which is going to be um, could be set to 25. 
just depends, uh, or you can have it set down, you know, below lower so as a as a volt under voltage limit. So you can play around with these. Um, I've had these set here with no problem. The short circuit protection, uh, I have it medium. You can also change these um, where it's quick, slow. Uh, basically, if something happens with the voltage, the brake delay in milliseconds is basically um, it's it's just it's just part of the, the control factor. So. Um, before it starts to, to break, um, you can put in a delay here and you can play with that as well. But that, don't try to use this as a deceleration or anything. And typically, we'll just leave that as it is. The other critical one here is the mixing. Now, if you want it uh, separate, where basically each motor is just independently um, going on its own, then you can put their separate. Uh, basically, what we do is we use a tank style where you're going, you want both of them to go forward at the same time. If you go left or you go right, you want one of them to slow down, one of them just to basically speed up or go the different opposite direction. So there's different mixed modes here. So you want it in a mixed mode for what we do. Uh, mixed mode one, and there's a chart for this in the Robotech manual. Mixed mode one is kind of a, I think, a, a more reactive or responsive mode. And basically, in that preset mode, it has these um, variables that basically say, okay, how much signal are we going to give each motor at each point in time, at each throttling range, essentially where you would have your, um, you know, controller, I'm sorry, where your joystick set it, set from, you know, at you know, this much signal, how, how reactive is it? So you can play with those. Two and three are, I think, a little bit more uh, subtle. Um, mode one, I think I like it because it's a little bit more responsive for the way I have it set. You can play with that as well, but you, you wanna have it as a mixed mode for what we do. Uh, once you come down to the, to the motors, you can have motor one and motor two down here. Let me close these out here. And you wanna make sure that you set motor one and motor two, which is down further, I'll show you that, it's down below. You wanna make sure that you set everything exact mirror image for motor one and motor two. If you don't, uh, you might have, you know, your droid might go one direction or the other, sort of unevenly if the speeds aren't set right, or if, um, you know, stall detection's happening, you might, when you turn one direction or something happens with one motor, um, it may cause a problem, so. Anyway, um, this is another area here under motor one and then motor two down below where you can change the direction. So you can also invert or make this direct here. Uh, if you try to set it up like that in the pulse and it works great, then don't worry about it. If you're finding you're having to play with it here and there, you can you know set this as your you know director inverted on the motor um, or you can do it over there either way. It's sort of like multiple places to change the same thing. Uh, pole pairs. Uh, the Q85, from what I understand, although there's, uh, this is what Kevin Holmes has, has set up, and he's had them all apart. So uh, you count the pole pairs, the magnetic poles, and I guess there's eight there. That seems to work smoothly. That just de depends on the design of the, of the motor. Um, that works well. That, I think, is, um, I don't know if that's what the standard default is, but I, had, I didn't have to change this. So eight, the closed-loop feedback sensor. Um, this is where you can choose what it is. Now, these motors, these Q85s, have hall sensors built into them. Uh, that's why you have the little yellow, blue, and green wires, the little tiny ones, um, as well as the phase ones, which are a little bit larger. So this is for the closed loop feedback sensor, and this is how it, it knows where it's going and where, where to command it. Um, you can select other, but there's no reason to in this case, so um, hall sensor is what you want to use. The stall detection, you can set this to where it's disabled entirely if you're finding that it's stalling over things and that. Um, it's there to kind of protect your motor. So I would say um, I do it at one second at half the power, which is actually uh, fairly fairly out of range. Um, I just don't want, you know, when I'm giving a little bit of uh, throttle, I don't want at 25% power at half a second. I don't want it to, to jump and jerk or find that it's, if I'm going over, you know, a, a route or a driveway or something that it's going to stall or give me a stall detection or error. So I'm, I have this set at least to one second at half power, which means I really have to have it sort of, you know, going, uh, intentionally going somewhere. The switching mode, go to trapezoidal, you can go trapezoidal, 
or sinusoidal, easy for me to say, sensorless or Hall plus encoder. Um, we just gonna, we're just going to go trapezoidal, and you can look at the manual and see all the um, explanation for that, but that's just what works for this particular setup. Um, you don't have to, the Hall counter, um, basically, just leave, I haven't had to do anything with these. You can just leave the Hall counter the way it is. Um, this is for the sinusoidal setting, sensorless, these are related to the switching mode, which we're not going to worry about. Um, motor output. So let me slick this down a little bit here. Motor output, you have amp limits, and this is what you can um, set to trigger essentially uh, faults and things of that nature. So. Uh, that's pretty high. I mean, you'll see how low the amperage is actually running on these things. So you can set that closer to where you know you think it is, and you can have it trigger a fault if it's if it's gone over. Um, you can also have it do something if it basically gets to that trigger point. So these are things you can play with. Um, I, I on this one, I haven't done much with that. The power adjust. You want to make sure these are both the same. Um, right now, they're at 100 percent. Um, I leave them at 100%, that means there's 24 volts going to them. If I put this down to 50%, then I'm going to have 12 volts to each motor and so on. Um, this is a way if you can reduce the overall power, if you find that it's just too aggressive and it's just too out of control, you can set these down lower. Just make sure they're exactly the same because remember each one of these motors is going forward and reverse and one of them is oriented backwards. So if you set one of these lower than the other, your droid will drift you know, one way or the other. So you want to keep these the same. Uh, but I adjust all my power uh, settings in the uh, speed and acceleration, whatnot there. So I leave these at 100%. Which brings me to the speed and acceleration. Um, you can look up the definitions of these basically, and you can see this is RPM. That's the max speed at which the motor will do. Uh, it'll probably do about 5,000 RPM. That's, you know, really fast. The higher you set this, the the faster it can go. So, you know, if you want to play with it, um, I would play with it slower first just to get a, a sense of what it does. Um, the acceleration is RPM divided by seconds. And so the closer basically this is, the faster it'll accelerate toward that. So this is pretty aggressive where um, you can actually have that accelerate faster. So if it's if it's 18 and 18, it's going to be one second basically toward this RPM. Uh, if you go higher higher than that, you go 2,000, it's going to basically go and cut into that, and so you'll have uh, basically a faster and faster to this per second acceleration. So you can go higher, you can go lower. The lower you go, the longer it'll take to get there. Maybe a little sluggish, uh, too fast. It's just you know it's something you have to just worry about whether or not it's uh, controllable. The deceleration is basically the same. I have this set higher because I want it to slow down as soon as I basically let off the, the throttle joystick. I want it to slow down you know, fairly aggressively, uh, not too much where it's skidding or, or you've got too much you know, back regeneration. Um, I haven't had any problem with this. You can set this higher too. It'll slow down even faster. Um, but you know, it just depends on your control. So remember, the faster you go, the faster you have to slow down. So you can kind of play with these. Um, there's sort of a ratio that you can keep basically these to the max RPM. And if you keep those all similar, you'll have you know similar performance. But it will react differently in in you know all different settings. So um, I've had mine to you know 4,500, 5,000. Uh, acceleration, you know, way up there close to that, deceleration. It's just, for me, it's just too much. Um, I just, it's kind of, uh, you know, there's a lot of wear, and it basically it puts a lot of torque on my belt, it puts a little torque on you know, the whole, the whole uh, assembly. So I've just basically kind of just slowed it all down and this seems pretty reasonable for kind of moderate, you know, um, events and things. So you can play with that. With my scripting, um, I have all different settings for each one of these based on where you uh, set the thumb wheel on the stealth. So you can go, you know, I've got three or four different modes where you can basically set it and have it at the lowest possible speed setting or you can have it at the, at the super aggressive one. So you can play with those. Operating mode, uh, when you're first setting this up, I recommend you going into open loop just to make sure everything is oriented correctly, make sure that your motors are smoothly accelerating and decelerating, 
Uh, and then once you you know all that's worked out, then go to the closed loop speed position. Um, basically, with the open loop, you have there's no feedback. So in other words, um, it it you still are reading the hall sensors because they're physically plugged in, but you're not using your your position or your acceleration or deceleration for any type of um, positioning feedback. So in other words, as you move the joystick back and forth, um, yes, it will respond to your joystick based on you know the signal that you're giving it, um, but it's not trying to sort of tune itself or correct itself along the way. With the closed loop speed position, um, it's reading the hall sensors and basically it's saying, okay, um, someone's told me to go to this position, I'm gonna try to get there and get there sort of efficiently based on all your other settings and I'm gonna to try to maintain that. So if I'm going along at a certain speed and I start to go up an incline or down a, a decline, um, it's gonna see, okay, wait a minute, I'm going a little bit faster than I'm told to or a little bit slower than I'm told to and it will compensate in torque uh, and voltage and it will basically try to you know keep you at that point so that allows you a little bit more stability and control um, overall and um, it's just a finite amount so in really super slow um, you know mo creeping basically you can just creep along or if you go really fast and so you can adjust that but that's you know that's basically the difference between closed loop mode and, and um, you can see that in the, in the manual as well the parameters here um, uh, basically keep that at a thousand for position mode velocity the turns minimum to maximum uh, these are you know 833.33 I think we uh, either that's the default or we got that from Kevin based on um, min to max turns for the motor these settings here uh, proportional gain um, integral gain and differential gain um, these are all uh, and actually, if you hover over it, um, it'll it'll give you a little, you know, kind of a set, you know, kind of a slight explanation, not too much though. So. Um, these things here, basically, you want you can keep you can use these as tuning. So you can start out with um, I think the default might be two for the prop uh, gain. Um, you can start out with two, and then you can start out with you know a on the integral gain like a 0.1 or or a 1.0. You can play with that a little bit, but basically, if you look up um, PID loops, and that's what the PID stands for, uh, they use that a lot in control loops um, for you know HVAC for all types of controls, uh, robotics, things of that nature. And uh, basically, it's kind of like if you had a, um, a spring and you basically you know, didn't want it to, as you, you know, shook it a little bit, you didn't want it to overcorrect constantly. So you kind of start putting tension on it, tension on it until it starts to, you know, going from this reaction to more, you know, subtle, more subtle until it kind of, you know, goes out to where, okay, here's a nice smooth line. Um, as you increase that, you're essentially uh, increasing the, the tension on that spring. So it begins to shake less and less and less and less until you can kind of get it to that point where, okay, here's where you want it, right? So it doesn't go above or below as dramatically. Um, the higher that is, like I said, the more aggressive it'll sort of be. Um, you you want to play with this. If you have it too aggressive, uh, then it'll start to yield um, you know negative results. Essentially, it's not going to be. Uh, it'll overreact a little bit too much. So you want to basically have it where you know as you are using the joystick that it's sort of responding you know the way that you like it. So um, I have zero on the gain. Um, basically, that is sort of a corrective. Um, uh, routine to the to the prop band the prop excuse me the prop gain so that will look basically it'll look at this um, prop gain and it'll try to, to to keep resetting the the time it's shaking so if you're going along it's going to keep looking at that and going okay i'm gonna i'm gonna keep you know as you add gain uh, integral gain to that it will basically um over time it will start to correct that start to correct that start to correct. so it'll try to essentially continue to reset that that signal, uh, the gain, until it's you know basically seen uh, getting it to where you want it. Um, the problem with that is sometimes it can be a little bit overreactive. If you set this too high, it'll it'll keep um, you know trying to correct things. And maybe you know with a joystick, you're basically you know sort of creating this you know really non-strict um, you know motion back and forth. If you had a a process where it was an assembly line or something robotic where it was just okay here's what it's doing you want it to do this go there do that um, then 
you can use these and tune them a little bit more so they're really super smooth. And because we're going, you know, as a joystick back and forth, um, sometimes those things just put a little bit too much uh, restriction on it. So that's zero. The differential gain is basically sort of the breaking of this loop, meaning that it'll slow it down. Um, a lot of times that's not used um, in a, even in general PID loops. So you will keep that at zero. So if you use anything, play with the prop gain and the integration. Um, four to me is pretty good. Um, you can go a little higher, you can go a little lower, kind of play with it a little bit and see how quickly it's responding back and forth. Um, that's that. Leave the integration limit percentage, the loop error detection. Um, typically, um, I have this disabled, um, but you can actually um, set this and you can play with it a little bit and you can say, okay, at you know, a certain error, then give me, um, basically, as you detect that, give me some Give me some feedback on that. Tell me what's happening. And when you go into this run tab over here, you're going to be able to track that and kind of see, oh, how how much error am I getting? In other words, how how many times is it not getting to the, the command signal that I'm telling it to uh, based on these settings? And you can tune that and tune that. And I've, I've actually played with this where I've gotten my error really low, um, you know, but it's if you set this, it'll basically, um, it'll, it'll give you, um, sort of that feedback um, and you know it'll use that um, toward its own process to say okay well if I have the loop error set then I'm going to do something about it I'm going to try to then you know contain or basically um, correct this as I go I'm pretty sure it's it's part of the whole thing so if you enable it it will give you feedback it will feedback toward the loop itself um, and it'll go through a, a you know essentially a process where it starts to manipulate your overall loop um, you can enable this if you'd like. Um, I've just basically disabled it for now only because I, I really want to just play with these general settings. Uh, I don't want it um, so much as helping me um, because I found that it's just maybe not as smooth. So you can play with that a little bit. Like I said, all the pref everyone's going to do this a little bit differently, but I just want to show some you know general guidelines for, for things. Um, and then here, the same thing for motor 2. And you essentially want to have the exact same settings in motor one, motor two. If you don't, it's gonna respond strangely. It's not gonna, you know, your motor one motor's not gonna be working properly, this and that. Or maybe, you know, one will work properly based on its set and the other one won't. So um, you wanna make sure these motors are set exactly the same. Um, once you get that all set up, over here on the right, um, you you can basically save it to, uh, to disk, which means your computer, so name it. I highly recommend uh, naming it and putting a date. So anytime you're making corrections, and if you make corrections tomorrow, put tomorrow's date, a week from now, a year from now. That way you always know, hey, when did it work? When when did I screw it up? How can I go back to a different date? So I always date these things with, you know, any of my code, Arduino, anything else. So if I make changes, I'll always put a different date so it represents, you know, what I did at that time. So I can kind of recall back to when uh, it may have worked or when I, there was something there that I liked in that and I can go back to that. Um, once you get this all set up, you want to save to controller. Basically what that's going to do, and I'm going to go ahead and save this. Um, actually, I just recently saved it, so it's not going to do anything. So if it's a, if it's a program that you already saved, it's not going to show anything. If you, if it's new and it says save, uh, oh, there we go. It, it popped up. Okay. So save to controller. Also, you can load it from your controller. So if you have, you know, a script that, or not a script, if you have a program that's already in your controller and you, you've lost it, you don't know where it is on your computer, you can always, when you plug in, um, it'll ask you if you want to load it from the controller and you can say yes and, and, and basically uh, populate this with what, what's on there. Or you can separately load this from the controller. Um, the other thing, um, let's see, I wouldn't, do too much with any of these others at this point but okay let's go to the run tab and on the run tab you can see right now it's sensing the red lights on as serial that's because i have the usb plugged in i do not have any joysticks um, connected right now but if i did um, the pulse would be uh, red and then basically you can see here the it says run script because it did that on auto start. So if you have a script and you're wondering, hey, how come it didn't run script? This is an indicator of the script uh, being run. Um, there's also a point here where my mouse is where you with the script, you can basically run the script, pause, restart. 
Um, so it'll run the script in the scripting tab, which is right here. And I have basically um, a script that I wrote to basically say, okay, um, at, you know, different uh, pulse input references. So at 1100, um, you want to go to this profile. At 1400, um, this is the PWM. So I have the thumb wheel on the stealth set to these, and you can put them wherever you'd like. Uh, so sort of like basically um, at the low range, it's you know going for kind of a, a very you know low setting. Put it sort of in the middle of the wheel. It goes for you know kind of a, a mid uh, sort of a semi decent speed. And then if I go all the way up, it's basically going to um, go to a, a super fast a super fast one here. Um, so anyway, this one ha this one I have four set up. So basically, as that anything above Anything below this, and there's only three settings here, but basically anything below that or above that, it'll go to the fourth one. So it, it, there's actually four modes here, but there's only three values need, needing to be set because anywhere else in the range, it's going to basically be, um, you know, one lower or one higher. Um, anyway, I've got the value right now going from um, uh, the pulse is basically I'm getting a value from pulse input number three, which is the unused to spare off the stealth board. And that's what I have inputting. And then basically um, I'm setting each of these values for each one of them. So max RPM, acceleration, and deceleration for each of these. So I'm basically in changing that entire speed control loop. So that dynamically allows you um, the ability to really change the whole way it's, it's rolling around. Uh, and that's, you know, it's been an advantage because if you're, you know, in a really crowded area around little kids, um, you can set it really low so it just creeps along. It's not going to be, um, you know, any danger to anybody. And then if you want to, you know, get it out and, and go fast and outrun some kids, then you can, you know, put it to a really high one. Um, okay, so back to the run tab. You can set up uh, a little, um, you, you can actually track these, but you can set up the um, values here. So I have motor amp one, motor amp two. You can also set the um, you know, what your battery voltage is. You can basically see what the battery command is. Um, the haul sensor speed, so I can put in, you know, haul RPM one, haul RPM two. Um, when you're testing your um, motors and you want to spin them, um, you can spin them by hand, basically. You can see these move and make sure that, you know, that it's reading. So if you had a, an issue where they're um, your motors um, bucking around or not working properly, um, you can you can move them and you can actually see if they're, um, um, you know, if they're connected, if, there's, if they're reading, and that's a good tool for troubleshooting. But anyway, you can see here that uh, the maximum uh, amps for each motor that I've had, just um, I playing with it earlier, is three amps, about 3.2 for one, 2.5 for the other. The other thing is you wanna make sure these are fairly close to each other. Um, the reason why these, the maxes are off is because I was just, I was playing with the sliders over here. And um, you'll see now that, you know, basically this should be exactly the same. So the top, the top slider here um, is going to be basically your forward and reverse. And so as I start to, to move this, you're going to see these going one direction. So that's right now at that speed, I mean, sorry, at that RPM setting, that's full one direction and then full the other. Um, if you use the lower slider in this case, this is going to be basically um, kind of left and right. So you'll see that they're going different directions. So if I say, oh, I want to go forward or one way, and then I decide I'm going to turn left or right, you're going to see these motors. Okay, now it's turning fully one direction, turning fully the other direction, or somewhere in between there as I'm sliding this back and forth. And so that's the mixed mode and that's your turning back and forth. And you can see the hall sensors there. They're basically counting the same and um, that's good. So, you know, you know that they're actually uh, working properly.
Uh, the other thing here is you can see your uh, pulse in, and when you have your joystick uh, attached, you're gonna see values here. So you're gonna see exactly at resting, should be around 1500 for each of these. Uh, as you move that back and forth, you're gonna see those change. The, the script here, this is basically telling what the script value is. Um, in this particular case, I don't have my um, controller on, so my pulse input three is, is not active. Um, if I turn my uh, joystick on, you'll see that as, you know, wherever I have the value. So it'll be set to, you know, 1,000 to 2,000 basically. And that will actually start to interact with the, the scripting that's here in the scripting tab. Um, console tab, basically, um, there's a lot of, um, you know, capability to this controller. So you can actually, um, you know, type in a lot of, a lot of code, um, you know, to basically control the, the data flow here. Um, you can basically run scripts. You can do all kinds of things from this if you like typing stuff in. Um, that's called, uh, it's like a micro basic, I think. is I think that's the micro basic in the Robo Run. Anyway, um, or maybe this is the micro, the scripting is. Anyway, one or the other, there's a micro basic. There's a whole language for this that you can use the console tab for. Um, and on the scripting, you can see here that it basically has, um, once you have the scripting loaded in the scripting tab, and basically you go over and you can you know, load it from a folder. Uh, this is normally gonna be all blank. So once you load it to a folder, then you basically can load it to the device here, which is your controller, uh, and then you can run it. Or like I said, when you start up, if you have this um, set to auto scripting, um, enable auto start, then it'll basically just run it as soon as you, you open it up. Um, so that's about it. And uh, if you have any other questions, um, you know, let me know. This stuff, you know, there's a lot of information here and uh, everyone's setup can be a little different depending on, you know, what their habits are. Um, but something that is a lot of fun to play with and it's pretty much a very powerful tool so it's a lot of fun so that's all thanks a lot